Hi everyone, this is Dio from The Art Trick. And did you know that at one point in my life, I was the world's greatest painter? I'm the world's greatest artist. Well, not really, but in my mind I was. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a painting I created back in college, almost 15, 16 years ago. And I'm gonna go ahead and repaint it. It's the same reference photo, it's a picture of my daughter. And I'm gonna see how much I've improved. All right, so I'm not using any special tools. I have my paintbrushes, my water in little drawers, my palette knives, and some napkins to dry out my brushes. I'll be using these paints, Bolitec. I get them over in Piedra Negras. Really awesome paint. There's a, like a paper shop, art supply shop, a few blocks from Bridge, International Bridge Number 1, and we just pick them up there. I have my white. My ultramarine blue, the golden yellow. This is a mixture of yellow and green, so it's more of a yellow green color. And then I have this red oxide color. That's all I'm gonna use for this. I'm gonna try my best to stay as true to the color palette from my college painting and see what I can come up with. Usually people want to start with the background. I tend to start with what's in the foreground, my main focus. I believe back in my college days, I would always start off with my background and start painting forward. What is this, amateur hour? Since these are acrylic paints, and one of the attributes to acrylic paints is that they dry rather quickly, I can paint one section and repaint the same section in a matter of minutes. And maybe in three or four minutes it'll be kind of dry depending on how thick or how thin you lay the paint down. And so I use a layering technique. I'll paint a solid color, go with a secondary color, maybe a third color. And then I'll go back to the original first color in different layers. I paint a little, let it dry, and paint the top of it, let it dry. I believe this assignment was to paint in the style of the Impressionist. You know, you want to kind of lay out the colors in different areas. If you're going to be using the color in the face, for example, I may add it to the shirt that she's wearing, the hair, the background. Kind of just throw some of that color around so that it's uh, unified and it doesn't look like separate paintings. All right, so I'm adding some blue to the darker spots. Again, I'm just laying down uh, lights and darks, not getting too uh, caught up in the details or the blending. I'm just laying down the darker areas with the blue. I had a second camera over the color palette where I was mixing, but once I hit record, it automatically stopped recording like two seconds after and I hadn't noticed, so I had to have none of that footage. So sorry about that. Working mistake. I've introduced a little bit of red into the lips. This was the red oxide mixed with a little bit of, of the titanium white and I'm laying down the darker colors of the hair before I go in with the lighter tones. 
And again, I'm just using these five colors. I'm using a red, a yellow, greenish yellow, and a blue. And these four colors do make up the primary colors. And I can mix these up and get any kind of color that I want, more or less. For example, I've mixed in some of this red oxide into the blue of the hair to get this violet uh, hue that gives me a darker tone for the hair. And I'll just go back and forth and back and forth into the hair, adding, you know, loose hair here and there just to give it a little bit more detail. Match the eyebrows to the hair color. And we'll just continue from there. All right, working on the dress, I've introduced a little bit of the yellows, a little bit of the titanium white, and now I'm adding some blue and white, a, a tint of the ultramarine blue, so to kind of unify the painting above with the shirt below. You can see I've used the same red oxide and white mix for the watermelons. It's the same color that I use for the lips. And even though I covered the original yellow with some white and a tint of blue, I'm going over it again with some more yellow. Now this kind of helps some of the color pop out from the background and it's just a smoother transition. Let's go ahead and turn this painting upside down. It just makes it easier for me to work on the bottom parts of the canvas, on the edge. Uh, there's no point in me, there's no point in me struggling with painting the lower half down below in such a tight space when it, where it's meeting the easel when I can just turn it upside down and work up here. I want to have the dress and the arm kind of figured out, I go back and check the color balance. Does it make sense still? Does the face still look good compared to and alongside with the dress? Just because you did paint a section of the painting, it doesn't really mean that you're done with it. You have to make sure that it works with the entire painting. So if you have to go back to a section that you already worked out, then go back and work on it. No one says you can't go back to add or retouch portions of the painting. Here I'm throwing in some blue for the really darker areas of the lips. And adding a, just a red oxide to the watermelons, just to give it a darker value in some areas. And now I'm using a wash of red oxide, which is just the red oxide acrylic paint mixed in with some water. And I'm gonna lay it over some of these areas just to warm it up a bit. It will definitely make it a little darker since red and green are complementary colors. And just touching up the hair with some more red oxide. And now here comes the boring part. Well, it's the boring part for me, the background. I usually have no interest in working on the background, but the challenge is to reproduce the image. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that as best as I can. I believe 
this was a, a gutter, like a rain gutter on the building, the apartments that we used to live at. And this is just the siding of the apartment. One of the biggest issues that I see with young artists today is them telling themselves that they're not good enough. And let me tell you something. You're not, okay? You are not good enough because you haven't practiced. If you just started drawing or painting or making art in any format, you're not gonna be very good at it. Keep on practicing, keep trying, keep failing, and keep getting better. That's the only way. Now around this time, I was already about two hours into the painting and usually I would have stopped, but since this was a challenge, I was trying to get it done all at once. So I started thinking like an artist, thinking of a way of how I wanted to paint this siding. So the formula was to paint to dark edges, the left side and the top part where the siding overlaps and to fill in the midsection with a lighter tone, right? Which is just red oxide mixed with white. And it worked out well enough where I was satisfied with it. Some last minute touch-ups on my hair. This entire painting took about two and a half hours. And I'm hoping it was an improvement. Well, there you have it, folks. 15 years of practice. Not bad, to me. not bad. Hopefully I improved. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the old painting and the new painting. I'd love to hear from y'all. Keep creating Eagle Pass. Did you forget your line already? Yeah. We haven't even started.